For those who see the world not as it is, but as it can be, who seek to make their vision of the future become reality, their mission is our mission. At Lockheed Martin, we never forget who we're working for. Uh, hello. Uh, hola, bonjour, ni hao. Hello, uh, my name is Alyssa Carson, call sign Blueberry. And at the age of three years old, I decided to become an astronaut and go to Mars. My journey began while watching a children's show, and the characters were acting out a mission to Mars. I then went and asked my dad if anyone had been to Mars. He explained to me that man had been to the moon, but not Mars. And it would be my generation that will eventually be making the trip to Mars. I started by studying everything I could find on Mars. <laughs> and um, I decided at that moment that there would be nothing limiting me in my ability to get to Mars. So I started by studying everything I could find on Mars. And as I got older, my dad took me to space camp in Huntsville, Alabama, which is where, at the age of eight years old, I won my first award, which was the Right Stuff Award, which is the highest award you can receive at, at space camp. They give this award to the person who they think has all the specialties to win this award. It was when I won this award, my dad shed tears because he knew nothing would limit me in my progress to, go, to get to Mars. Since then, I have done everything I could to continue my pursuit of Mars. I have been to space camp in Huntsville, Alabama in the United States 12 times, space camp Turkey in Izmir, Turkey, and space camp Canada in Laval, Canada, becoming the first person to complete all the NASA space camps in the world. I am also the first person to complete the NASA Passport Program, visiting all 14 NASA Visitor Centers in the United States. And these are the different 14 NASA Visitor Centers. Completing this task only four months after it started. I am also an ambassador for a group called Mars One, and they are a group sending people to Mars to colonize Mars. I have also attended Euro Space Camp in Belgium, and also graduated from National Flight Academy in Pensacola, Florida, and Virginia Space Flight Academy in Wallops Island, Virginia. And they are both in the US. Now at 14, I will continue with my training, including a week of Advanced Space Academy in Huntsville, Alabama, as well as Advanced Rocket Training at the NASA Wallops Island facility this summer. In addition to studying and the camps, I will also obtain my scuba and skydiving certifications as well as my pilot's license before I'm 18. I plan to attend Cambridge in the United Kingdom, International Space University in Strasbourg, France, and Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Boston, Massachusetts. Now the reason I do these things is to ensure that I continue to have unique things on my resume so that I am one of the people picked to eventually make the trip to Mars. Now, I currently attend the Baton Rouge International School. And today, some of my classmates are here supporting me. And I would like to thank them for that. At our school, we learn all of our subjects in English, French, Spanish, and Chinese by teachers that are from all over the world. So not only are they native speakers of the language, but they also share their culture as well. I feel as though my teachers bringing in their worldly experiences keeps me from feeling limited to being in Baton Rouge all day. And I know this is yet another reason why I will not allow anything to limit me in my quest for Mars. This will also give me the ability to be able to interact and converse with people from all over the world, as it will take the world to send people to Mars. Hearing all of these things I've done, you might think that space is my entire life. <laughs> But I do keep a balanced life. I play the piano, I dance ballet, I play competitive soccer, I'm also involved with Girl Scouts, Junior Beta Club, Drama Club, Robotics Team, and Book Club. So you could say, I have not let my dreams stop me from living my childhood. I still do have fun with my friends. My friends sometimes think I'm crazy with my dream, but they are very supportive. But my favorite thing will always be my dream, and the training involved with getting to Mars. I love completing missions at space camp and feeling like I'm finally taking my trip to the red planet. So how or why 
do we need to get to Mars? How will this help change our world? I'm reminded of an old Greek proverb. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. How does this quote reflect our desire to go to Mars and change our future generations? This proverb tells us we must plan ahead for future generations. We must continue to pursue to be inquisitive and exploratory, encouraging people of all ages. Our schools are teaching kids today for jobs that not only do not yet exist, may even eventually exist on Mars. We must continue our human nature to explore. As our technology is increasing more and more every day, it is now time for us to explore beyond this planet. Uh, remember, a single plant species will become extinct. Do you want to follow the path of the dinosaurs? The dinosaurs could only explore this planet and so became extinct. Now, I don't want to see that happen with the human species who do have the ability to leave this planet. Our planet is bombarded by objects every day. It is only a matter of time before another big one changes everything we have here on Earth. I want to plant the tree. Sure, there are lots of risks in going to Mars, but I believe that the rewards outweigh the risk. If we stay here, then we know for sure one day um, well, that one day we will follow the path of the dinosaurs. But if we explore, we can find the rewards that are waiting for us out in the universe. So I'm the old man that is planting the tree, dedicating my life to training, learning, and teaching so that we'll take that next step to get us to Mars, our second Earth, so that future generations can live on Mars and continue the exploration of space. And the, hu and the human race can survive and go on for thousands of more years. You are some of the people sitting in this room right now that can help plant the tree and change the world. It is our generation that must rise up and make the difference, make the change. We must bring the world together as one. We must, bring, we must all be a part of the human race. We are all the same. It is time to gather that next level or step of knowledge that will bring the evolution of the human race. Some have said that finding out new knowledge and truth that is out there will bring chaos and instability. But ignorance brings chaos, not knowledge. So I say to you, do everything you can to plant the tree. But you might ask, what can I do as one person? While trying to find the age of the earth, Claire Patterson, a geochemist, discovered the amount of lead poisoning being put out in the atmosphere through lead and fuels and in containers with food, toys, etc. He knew he had to do something before people started dying all over the world. In his 20-year journey, he got lead removed from from fuels, paints, and other items. Lead levels in people's blood were lowered 80% in a very short amount of time. It took him 20 years, but he did not quit. He knew he had to plant the tree. He was successful at his task. One person can make a huge difference. Remember, there are young people, just like us, that helped change the world. Joan of Arc, age 16, inspiring the Dauphin de France to renew the fight with the English, defeating them at Orléans as Joan had predicted. Saint Therese de Lisieux, age 15, entering the convent early with the Pope's special permission. Her, her writings of her spiritual journey inspired many with her simple but meaningful philosophy. Young people can make a difference, and young people can change the world. We, as our generation, can make a huge difference by doing it together. We can plant the tree. So how do we get to the point where we're sending humans to Mars and eventually changing the world? We must bring the brightest minds, scientists, engineers, and world leaders to come together in friendship and, mu and mutual respect and solve how we get to Mars and further space exploration. We must, as our generation, grow up and continue to make sure these changes are happening. It is vital for all of us as the human race. We cannot limit ourselves. These people in our generation must plant the tree. So what does going to Mars help in changing our world? The current plans have people heading to Mars in about 20 years. Some plans are one way like Mars One in the Netherlands, and some do include a return trip. NASA is working on SLS, Space Launch System, the most powerful rocket ever built that will leave this planet to go to deep space. On top of the SLS rocket, there will be the Orion capsule. 
On December 5, 2014, Orion launched atop the Delta IV Heavy rocket from Cape Canaveral. This first test of the Orion orbit lasted four hours of test and reentry, and they were all practically flawless. This is the start of US and NASA heading back to deep space and to Mars. And we know with the technology we have now, we could terraform Mars in about 300 years to become another Earth, for us to have a place to live and another point to leave from to explore further into space. It may sound like a lot of time to terraform Mars, but remember how many centuries we have been here on Earth. In only 53 years, we went from sending the first man into orbit, Yuri Gagarin, to where we are today. We have sent satellites out of our solar system, as well as probes and rovers all over our solar system, and landing on other planets, including Mars. Think about how our technology is increasing, and what technology we might have in 20 years. We now need to get people on Mars to speed up the process of understanding Mars. It has been said by the Curiosity team that they could complete a year's work by the Curiosity rover in an hour with people on Mars. The benefits and rewards that we learn in space and on Mars help us here on Earth. We have so many things that we use every day that help us in our day-to-day -day life that have come about because of space exploration. It is time to plant the tree. You are the future leaders of our world in our generation. Can I please ask everyone to raise their hand as high as they can? So raise it up. Now raise your hand even higher. Okay, now you can put your hands down. So even though I said to raise your hand as high as you can the first time, people still raised it even higher the second time. Now this can be seen as trying your hardest in things, whether you're going after a goal, a dream, a vision, or whatever you want to do in life. Or maybe it's just playing a sport that you love or doing schoolwork, but whatever it is, trying your hardest at it and giving it your all and giving it your best. Now, back in 2012, when everyone thought the world was ending, because the Mayan calendar was ending. What they didn't realize was that the Mayan calendar is based on cycles. And on December 21st, 2012, the calendar started over with another long count. What we have also seen is that the ending of these cycles, we have seen great changes in our past. I believe that the ending of the Mayan calendar is our new beginning and change in our world. Just think about the changes we have seen since 2012 including the progress of 3D printing and solutions, we, and solutions we have found for problems we had to get to Mars. We are here at XDEM. As this conference ends, this is our new beginning. We can either do nothing and let our world on the path, continue on the path that's on now, or we can take control and make the changes for a better world. Now, this is truly a time of change, a time to explore a time to evolve, and a time to plant the tree. We cannot have any limits in furthering our exploration of space. In 20 years, I'll be on Mars. Where will you be? Will you help plant the tree? We are the Mars Generations. You can also keep up with my adventures at nasablueberry.com. Thank you.